of my favorite people in the world is my Quebecois friend, Ingrid. Ingrid's first language is French, and uh, she learned English as an adult and remembers what that was like. So she's very patient with me when she's helping, with me, helping me with my French. She's also really smart. And uh, when she gives me help as a language coach, it's really good help. Um, uh, Ingrid is, uh, as I said, from Quebec. And like, like many Quebecers, she can speak French two different ways. She can speak uh, a very standard sort of French that, that uh, everybody uses around the world. Often Canadians refer to CBC French, which means the, the French that you hear on the TV news. And this is similar to the French you'd hear anywhere around the world, in France or in uh, uh, Côte d'Ivoire or, or, or Canada. Uh, but then when she's hanging out with her friends, uh, she can speak a real down-home Quebec French, and I enjoy both. One of the things that she's really good at is helping me sort out expressions that I might learn from uh, books or recordings that are uh, st nice standard French but sound a little bit funny uh, in Canada. So uh, that's, that's really good input. But one of the best things she does every now and then when she's helping me out, when I'm preparing for some sort of situation where I know I'm going to have to use my French, uh, she meets with me and she has a writing pad. Either I bring a writing pad or she rings, brings a writing pad. And what we do is we talk for a little while, uh, maybe half an hour or something, and then we pause. And while, while we're talking, she's been taking notes on some of the things that I said. And she'll, uh, after half an hour, will say, uh, this, sounded, this sounded strange. You should say this differently. Here's a better word for, for that. That kind of input, that is a perfect language coach. And so we have this pact that every now and then we get together with a writing pad. Uh, there are all kinds of pacts in my life uh, with different people. And, you know, the best is what happens with Ingrid. But I also go up to the corner store near my home, and the owner there is a Mandarin speaking Chinese. So what I do before I go there is I, I practice in advance and I get some stock phrases and expressions that I'm going to use. My Chinese is very limited, but uh, I prepare. And as I'm walking up to the corner store, I'm talking to myself and repeating these expressions that I'm going to use in Chinese. What, I'm, what I do with uh, the multilingual people around me is I make informal arrangements uh, about language and with, with people who speak my target languages. So at the corner store, I go up to this corner store and I practice the expressions that I've been using. You know, how much is this? And, and how are you doing? And that sort of thing. And uh, and what happened is the guy was so excited or, or uh, pleased to see a white guy who could say something intelligible in Chinese. He said, hey, every afternoon at about 4 o'clock, it's kind of slow in here. You can come in and, and uh, I can teach you some more Chinese. So that's really cool. That's a, a very informal pact that I have. Um, one of the people who works for me is Margherita, and Margherita is from Italy. We do something uh, of a pact that is a, a language exchange. Uh, Margherita is in Canada improving her English, and while she's here, she is uh, teaching Italian. Uh, one of the best ways to make a pact to improve your target language is to be a speaking coach for somebody who is serving as a speaking coach for you. Margarita is great because she's, again, like really smart, uh, understands what it means to learn a language. She has done some teaching so we can use uh, terminology familiar to teachers and speed up the process of um, communicating new information to one another. Uh, we have an agreement that we will speak for a while in English and then uh, speak for a time in Italian. Uh, Italian is a very new language for me. Um, so this is this is super help super helpful. One of the things that you want to do when you make a pact with somebody about your uh, language learning is you want to agree on the terms and the guidelines. For example, say, you know, we're going to speak for 15 minutes in Italian and then we'll do 15 minutes in English. Don't just uh, get together and say we'll speak some Italian, we'll speak some English. Make some decisions about how that's going to work and uh, are you going to meet one time and speak Italian, meet the next time and speak English, or are you going to do half and half? Are you going to talk on Skype? Are you going to meet over coffee? 
uh, talk about those things so that you both uh, agree on them and nobody feels disappointed nobody feels like uh, they had to do much more work than the other person you want to reassure the other person the the person that you're making your uh, pact with uh, that they will uh, only have to use their their own language for a limited amount of time remember that for another person uh, to use their language with you when your language is not that great yet uh, it's work for them so be sensitive to that and uh, just let them know this is not going to go on forever and uh, you know we'll talk for a bit and then we'll break and you can relax and we can speak English or you know whatever is easier for you don't mix the two languages at the same time don't sit there and speak Spanglish with uh, with a friend speak either Spanish or English uh, one or the other. You can do one thing well or two things poorly and it works much better if you stick with one thing at a time. But uh, you know be fair and make sure that it's an exchange. I have a friend, uh, a Canadian friend who grew up in a German speaking family and uh, we have a pact. Uh, when I found out how well he could speak German I told him that I had studied some German years ago but my German is is quite dormant and so I said to him, uh, you know, können wir bitte Deutsch sprechen? Ich brauche die Übung. Uh, is it all right if we speak German together? I really need the practice. And uh, that was great. But you need to remember that sometimes if you have bilingual friends who grew up with your first language but also speak another language, that sometimes they're not quite as bilingual as they may even think they are. Uh, not not so much with uh, Peter, but uh, my German-speaking friend here. Uh, but with some people, they grew up with a, a language at home, and it's a, the language they used around the house, but they don't necessarily read or write. They may have some expressions that are very regional, and they're not aware of whether the way that they're speaking is very informal or formal, whether it has hints of certain dialects or, or regional forms. Uh, they They may not be aware of errors in their own language. So um, bilingual people who uh, have a heritage language uh, can be very helpful in, as language coaches, but not necessarily uh, ideal. Just, just know what the limitations are. Uh, they may also not appreciate your use of the language because for them they are so comfortable switching from one to the other. They may not be as sensitive as other people would be to the effort that it takes for you to use your target language and the effort that it takes for you to learn another language. Uh, so people who grew up bilingual, they don't remember putting any effort into it. But for you, you know what it's like. And this is why people who are learning your mother tongue often serve very well as language coaches for your target language because they remember how hard they had to work and they know what you're, what you're wrestling with and what you're feeling like. Uh, In the local shopping mall uh, near my home, there's a, a, a retired gentleman who comes in and has coffee just about every day. His name is Aldo, and uh, Aldo speaks Italian. Uh, when he and I uh, get together, it, it's always by accident, but it's never a language lesson. We don't have language lessons. We don't have tutoring sessions. We just have chats together, and Aldo is very patient. He knows that I'd like to improve my Italian. So one of the things you want to do is when you're suggesting some sort of a pact or some kind of an agreement about the terms of the languages that you're going to use, don't make it sound heavy. Make sure that it's a very casual sort of thing. Uh, like, you know, how about if we speak a little bit of uh, a little bit of Russian? Uh, could we speak Russian for a few minutes every time we get together? I'd really love to speak your language um, and you could help me a lot. How would that be? Uh, most people are very glad to give you uh, some help as a language coach and to make this sort of pact with you. Uh, but again, be sensitive. When you start to see them uh, getting a little tired, just let it go and uh, be sensitive to that. And, and ask, would you rather uh, speak English now? You can ask. Uh, explain what you're trying to do without making it sound like you're asking for a tutor. Because many people who are willing to talk with you and serve as your language coach are not interested in being language tutors and uh, they wouldn't be very good language tutors either. They're people that you can have a conversation with and that will give you some some practice time. A, a lot, when you ask somebody for uh, a chance to practice your target language, allow them to say no without, feel, without feeling embarrassed. Don't pressure anybody. 
they may say, oh, I, I don't feel too comfortable speaking uh, my other language. Or they might say, oh, it's just so much easier for us to talk in English. Well, you know, let that be. You'll have other opportunities uh, if all goes well. So when I am meeting with other people and using my target language, I actually have a system. I have a, a five-step system that I use to make sure that I uh, can get the most value out of the time that we have. I don't need to have long sessions with uh, with my language coach. Short sessions are fine, but I do prepare and I do get a lot of value out of them by following these five steps. And that's what I'm going to share in the next few videos. This is what I call the FORCE cycle. And uh, the acronym is the English word FORCE, which is F-O-R-C-E. So if you want to find out about the FORCE cycle, you got to watch the next video. See you soon.